Hey guys, what's good? Welcome back to my channel. I am like weirdly in such a good mood today and I really shouldn't be because my back. So last night I was lying on the floor and Elliot was like, let me stand on your back, let me crack your back. I was like, huh, mm, no. And he was like, no, come on. Like I know how to do it properly. I'll do it properly. I was like, dude, I'm scared you're gonna stand on my neck and kill me. That is how much I don't trust the fact that you know how to do it properly. But he did it and it clicked and I was like, I've woken up this morning with like the biggest pain in the top of my spine. So Elliot, if you have ruined my life, I will ruin yours. Love you, mean it. Anyway, for today's video, I'm bringing you Sailor Realness, this maritime garment, and also a full video of second impressions. So all too often when I do first impressions, I always say I'm gonna try products again, just to like test them out. And I do occasionally do it, but what I mostly do is reuse the products for Instagram videos, which maybe isn't as helpful to you guys who are like strictly watch me here and not over on Instagram, which if you don't, why? Yeah, so I've got a few products here. It's not exactly a full face, but it's like, it's a good selection of makeup products that I have only tried once. So whether that be a first impressions and I didn't like it or a first impressions and I did like it, but I've just never fucking used it again. This isn't a products I hate. This isn't given products I hate a second chance. This is literally just products that I have used only the ones that I have been meaning to try again and just never have. So if that, Jesus, this is gonna be an issue. <laughs> Ow. If that sounds, like something, if that sounds like something you guys are interested in, definitely keep watching. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy it. And of course, subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. Uh, I'm telling you right now, I am not doing a crazy eye. In my last couple of videos, I have done cut creases, gradient liners. So I am keeping it simple, which means I'm probably going to start out with skin, I think. Let's do skin. Let's do skin. All right, then. So my skincare is all done. I do it before every single video. Look at this fucking glowing skin, mother. If you guys want a skincare routine, let me know. Um, I do get asked occasionally, my skin, and I'm not gonna brag, my skin is pretty fucking smooth. The one comment I get about my makeup in real life, which is wonderful, like it warms my cold, dying heart, is that people always say they can't get over how nice my skin looks in real life. Which is, as a makeup artist, as a makeup enthusiast, as a human being, is one of the nicest compliments for me I could ever receive. My skin has a lot of color, <laughs> has a lot of discoloration, I have red red patches and minimal scarring from... I'll just wait for the hovercraft outside to finish its fucking business. Are we done? I have really minor, minimal scarring from acne, spots, whatever it is, from when I was younger, which is not like the reason I have a beard, but the beard helps. But aside from the discoloration and minimal scarring, I do have smooth skin. If you can hear noises, they're still building that fucking supermarket downstairs. So you were just gonna have to bear with it the same as I am. I apologize, it is not my supermarket, I'm not building it. I want it there, so I shouldn't really complain. But also, it's in my nature to complain, so. But yeah, my skin for the most part is relatively smooth. It has been a journey and a half. It has literally been like a whole crux search. I'm about to fucking destroy them all to get rid of my bad skin. Where was I going with this? Skincare routine. If you guys want a skincare routine, let me know. Let's get started with today's fucking agenda, shall we? So for primer, I'm going in with the Veil Mineral Primer from Hourglass. I used this once in a video where Michael Finch picked all of my makeup. I was like, pick on my makeup, I'll literally do whatever you want me to do. And he gave me this because he hates it and he thought he'd me over. I ended up really liking this. I don't know if it's gonna be the same today. At the time when I first, <sighs> what do you want? No. At the time when I first used this, I really liked it. I thought I was going to hate it because he did, um, but I realized that I... <sighs> it dried in the tube and just exploded. <sighs> Been here before. <laughs> Normally someone fetches me a towel. Oh, that's my maritime garment ruined. Anyway, I'm going to take a little bit of this. Can't remember what this does. I think it's like a smoothing primer, but I, I know I remember I liked it because I texted and I was like, you okay? Love the primer, thank you so much. I think it's a little bit like professional from Benefit, but not as disgusting. So it's not like drying, but it's not hydrating in any kind of a way, which at the time I thought was gonna be an issue, but again, I ended up liking it, so. Fuck you, Michael. Just kidding, I love that dog so much. For foundation, I'm going in with the Stay Naked from Urban Decay. This one, I don't recall using this any other time other than when I did a video. 
Oh my god, that was it. I did a first impressions on this and the concealer when it came out and my microphone was off for the whole entire thing. I was filming another video. I think I was filming like a palette review or something. And so I did the palette review and then I filmed this review and my mic was off for all of it. So I didn't end up posting it. I'm pretty sure I remember saying I didn't like this, but I like the concealer, which I'm going to use in a minute. And I'm also pretty sure I haven't used either since. I think because it pissed me off, I was like back at the shelf. Don't want to talk to you again. So I'm going to go in with the shade 20NN, which is neutral, neutral. So I'm sticking that on my Morphe sponge. One of the reasons I like trying products, like if I'm not too sure about them, I like trying them a second time, is because I honestly think that a lot of stuff is circumstantial. My skin has changed a lot in the last, I'd say 12 months, a lot in the last two years, but like even still in the last 12 months it's changed. And I think everything, like I said, is situational, it's dependent on primers and how you set it, how you apply it, what concealer you use, like there's so much that goes into it. I don't think it's simply a case of use a product, don't like it, never use it again, which is why I like doing the like second chance videos like this, like the products I hate. Those kind of videos just because sometimes, like the other day I did the Pat McGrath foundation, you do kind of change your mind or you use it in a different way with different products and you kind of realize that maybe you do like it. And then of course there are the other products that you realize you really fucking don't and they deserve nothing more than to go in the trash or to be given to a friend. Okay, so case in point, I know for a fucking fact this foundation did not look like this the first time I used it. It looks good, it looks good, I like it. As always, if you guys have tried these products, let me know your thoughts. One of my favorite things is hearing what other people think about products, whether I like them or hate them. So let me know down below. Okay, so the foundation is all on. I am really liking it, to be honest. I think a lot more than the first time I tried it, which is a good thing. It's a little dry over here. I don't know if that's the primer or my skin or the foundation, but it's something. And to be honest, I don't think it's my skin because I exfoliated literally fucking yesterday. It's not my favorite foundation. Like I'm not gonna sit here and be like, oh my God. It's nice. It's not the worst foundation I've ever tried by a fucking mile. It's a nice foundation. I would use it again. Would I purchase it? Probably not. For concealer then, like I just said, I'm going in with the Stay Naked Concealer from Moment Decay. This is the shade 20 CP, which I don't think is the lightest. I think this might be my exact skin tone, sure. I think they do maybe one or two lighter ones. So again, sponge. I think this is this is a video of thoughts and trying to remember things. I'm pretty sure I liked this concealer more than the foundation. So I'm pretty sure I like this concealer, just period. Do you know what? I think I did. I think I did like it. Because I fucking like it now. I think I'm gonna do everything on like a would I use it, would I buy it kind of thing. So the foundation I've already done, the primer, would I use it again? Yes, probably. Would I buy it? Probably not, just because I do prefer primers like Gula and Charlotte Tilbury that have more hydrating qualities. And that does smooth my skin and make my skin look and feel nice. It is a mineral primer, so there's a little bit of a dryness to it, which I think might be this whole dry situation over here. The concealer would I use again? Fuck yes, I really like it. Would I buy it? Yes, I would. I'm kind of annoyed at myself for not using it more because it's a really, really nice concealer. There's minimal creasing, but that happens with me with pretty much every single concealer I use. Creasing to me is never one of those things that I'm like, this concealer's trash because it's just my fucking skin. It's like, it's my fault. Like if you put a liquid into a crack, it's gonna fucking settle in the crack. You know what I mean? Also, if your concealer's creasing, set it, put some eyeshadow over it, and move the fuck on. That is the thing I get asked, I feel like the most, is like, how do I stop concealer creasing? I was literally in a shop the other day and so we just got talking about what I do for work. And she was like, oh my God, how do you stop concealer creasing? Like I've tried everything. I was like, bitch, when I find out, I will come back in and let you know. Because as of right now, we're in the same boat, girl. We are the two humans on Noah's Ark, struggling to figure out how to set our damn concealer so it doesn't crease. So for a little bit of powder, I'm taking the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Powder. This stuff is basically like the Le Mer powder, which is this one right here. So this is the powder from Le Mer. This stuff is unreal. It's a little bit pricey. I think it's 70, maybe 75, something like that. I did actually buy this a long time ago now, maybe like a year ago, two years ago. It is so good and I would repurchase this because it's beautiful. It's stunning for events or like real life makeup. This stuff is great. It has like a light, I think it's like pearls or something in there and it has like a light reflection. So it makes the skin look so fresh and dewy even when you've got like a shitload of makeup on. 
This stuff is similar. I think it's about the same price. I think this is 60. I'm pretty sure. But this basically, it works the same. So it's a soft focusing, light diffusing loose powder. And then if you want a drugstore alternative, another powder which I actually really like is the pressed powder from Milani. It's the glow when it's in the drawer. I'm not gonna go get it because I'm a lazy bitch. It's just a pressed version of these two. But I'm pretty sure when I use this, I said basically what I've just said. But I think I did say I preferred the Le Mer powder to this one. I think this is a beautiful powder from what I remember. But for me, like nothing beats the Le Mer powder. I think it's fucking superior. Also, this smells a bit like an old couch. So that's great. I'm gonna take a tiny little bit on this Japanese brush. Hit the high points in my face. The one thing you kind of have to be careful about with light reflecting powders is that if you do too much, it looks like you've done too much. So I'm taking like minimal, minimal taps just out of the lid. And this will just give you like a really gorgeous glow. If you have older, more mature skin, something like this will be ideal if you want glowy skin without using highlighter. Highlighter is one of those products that will pick up on texture. So something like this will be perfect if you want to glow without using something as harsh as highlighter. This is one of those products that you just won't see on camera. I mean, you might see it a little bit, but you just probably won't just because it catches the light a certain way. And these lights are so like flat and like strong. There's just no hope, which is why highlighter never picks up as well on camera as it does in real life. In my humble opinion. Believe it or not, I don't have a bronzing product that I've only used the once. I did rut through literally fucking everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and quickly rip on a bronzer and I'll be right back. Okay, so contour and bronzer done. For contour, I use the Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow Duo. And bronzer is the Beach Bronzer from Women's Decay in the shade Bronzed. These two are just always on my desk. They're two products that I know, two products that I love. So yeah, I literally use them all the fucking time. For highlight number one, I'm taking this one from NARS. This is Albatross. Just from looking at this in the pan, I can't, I think this was the first impressions video, I'm pretty sure. I don't think I liked it. I haven't gone back and checked, but it just looks like one of those highlighters that I probably don't like. But I'm gonna go in just with my ABH 23 start patting that on so if you guys are new here and um, maybe you aren't aware of my thoughts when it comes to highlighters i like something obnoxiously bright i like to be obnoxiously highlighted at all times so highlighters like this don't really butter my croissant this kind of reminds me of the morphe highlighter like they're dull which is like fine if you don't like a really intense highlighted look again something like mature skin this would be great just because it's like a glow from within kind of glow it's not anything crazy but to me this just looks like my skin when i put foundation on it has that same kind of like skincare underneath foundation glow there's nothing like crazy about it, it just looks like fresh skin Mm, so yeah, I think this one's still a little bit of a miss for me. But then I also have the Brain Freeze palette from JSC. Have I even ever fucking used this? I must have. Did I? Oh no, I have. I can see that I have. Okay. So this looks like this. One of the reasons I haven't used this a whole lot is because it's not that I don't like it, but it's just not highlighters that I would go for. The thing with Jeffree's Skin Frost formula is that I don't love it. The Extreme Frost, which I don't have here, but the Extreme Frosts are stunning as like toppers. I wouldn't go in with it on its own, which I said before. They are beautiful as toppers though. So for even like for creative Instagram looks where you need something that's really fucking super intense, the Extreme Frosts are perfect for that. The Skin Frost formula, which is this, for me, it just seems a bit too baked, like a bit too chunky. I mean, I haven't used the Skin Frost formula for some time. And obviously my skin is in a lot better condition now, so maybe it won't be as bad. But I used to love the Skin Frost. I used to use it all the fucking time, the ice cold one. When they first came out, I literally like jumped on fucking boy straight away. I was like obsessed. But I didn't really have as much makeup knowledge back then as I do now. So now acquiring that knowledge and knowing more about like what products work for my skin and the kind of finish that I want and what looks smooth and what doesn't the skin frost just aren't a product that i would reach for but in saying that same as extreme frost they're beautiful for instagram looks like creative makeup looks where you need something that's super intense because in real life i would not wear a skin frost to me they're just too thick like it's too much anyways i'm just taking a little bit of the shades freeze tag and cold shoulder and that's on a morphe m504 brush so this is just like a little blending brush and this i just kind of like to just tap on i don't swipe highlighters really like that's beautiful and i'm sure it's picking up really nicely on camera and in photos i'm sure it would look fine but this is not for me and my skin a real life highlighter it's not something that i would like wear to an event but it is something i would wear on my lid or my inner corner just because obviously there's not as much texture around my eyes as there is on my cheeks 
So I hope that makes sense. There's such a massive difference between products that work on camera and the way you do makeup for camera as opposed to doing it for like real life situations. For me anyway, like I was even I was talking to Elliot about this last night. We were sat in his and he was like really fucking close to my face. And he was like, your makeup is seamless. Like it is literal perfection. And I was like, bitch, I don't fucking know how because this is like film makeup. This is what I do for camera. So for me, I go in with stuff a little bit heavier. I'll do like my cheap products a little bit heavier because the lights kind of like blow everything out a lot for photographs it just picks up a lot nicer. So this kind of makeup that I do on YouTube and Instagram is an event makeup, which by the way, if you guys want to see an event makeup video, like how I make makeup last, my favorite products, exactly how much I go in with, let me know because that's a video I've wanted to film for a while, so I will do that. But they are two very different things, for me at least. I mean, I see some people in real life sporting what I consider to be film makeup, but that is none of my business. Okay, so you can see that is stunning. But again, not a real life highlighter. Would I use this again? Absolutely. It is part of my collection for a reason. To be honest, those two shades that I just used would probably be the only ones I would use. Possibly the other ones for like lid colors. But again, I have eyeshadows that do a better job. But yeah, that is that on that. I also don't have a blush for today's video. So I'm just going in with this, which I've been f***ing obsessed with recently. This is the Free Lover Cheap Palette from NARS. And I go in with a mix of the shades Luster and Final Cut. And then like if I feel like it, a little bit of the shade Crave. But this is like really kind of rosy, so I try and avoid that. I'll maybe do a little bit. So this isn't really part of this video, I just thought I'd do it anyway. Just because it's a really nice palette, it's constantly on my desk. I have used it so, so much since I got it. Oh, the Brain Freeze palette, would I buy it? No, probably not. I already have so many Skin Frost products that I don't use all too often. So no, it's not something I would purchase. But the Extreme Frost, yes, because they're fucking unreal. Okay, so I've just gone ahead and done one eye. I really wasn't sure what I wanted to do. Super quick, super simple. And for that, I'm taking the Conspiracy Palette from Jebby Star Cosmetics in collaboration with Shane Dawson. This I did a review video on, same as the Mini Controversy Palette and the Lip Gloss and wherever else they brought out. And I just haven't used this since. I said I was gonna give it another go because I really liked it and I, I just haven't. So this right here is what the palette looks like. I'm sure you guys have seen it before. I said at the time I reviewed this, this is not my favorite palette from JSC. The color story is not something that I would usually gravitate towards. I think the palette itself is beautiful. And of course, JSC, just good eyeshadows. So go ahead and prime my eye a little bit. I just took some shape tape from Tarte, which I haven't done for a while. So I'm taking this corner pastel mint shade and this is the shade What's the Tea. I am not a huge fan of pastel eyeshadows but i thought i would just kind of give it a go really do something different for a change i see people all the time like even some of my friends like Rady, for example she does like a pastel like one color on the eye and she looks fucking so beautiful i do it and i just look weird i don't get it i'm just kind of packing that all i really don't like pastel colors this isn't my favorite eye look but i did this side and i was like okay great i have to do the other one when it comes to eyeshadow i like depth but, you know, this is fine. So I'm just going in with that, not too carefully, just swirling my brush around. This eye look literally took like three minutes. As you can probably tell. So I'm just like winging that up a little bit. Then I'm going to take the shade Not A Fact, which is probably my favorite shade in this palette. And I'm kind of starting by stamping that just on my outer corner, almost to create liner. So I'm going to drag it out a little bit. So I do really like this palette and I really like Jeffree Star eyeshadow formula. I feel like I haven't used this palette a ton just because the shades in it just aren't shades that I usually go for. Would I use it again? Yes. Just because I think some other shades in particular are stunning. Would I buy it? I don't think so. Just because again, for the simple fact that they're not colors that I use. I would weirdly be more inclined to buy the mini controversy just because the blues and the purple, not so much the purple, but the blues especially are colors that I love. I'm just taking the smaller end of that brush Brush. I'm just going like right into my inner corner. And again, really not being precise with this at all. Just taking that first blending brush, just to blend over top because it really doesn't matter. So I just went ahead and added a little bit of a liner. I'm taking the shade my right here, which is the black. And I'm just stamping that in between the liner and the purple shade. I'm just going to run that same purple shade under my eye and add a lash. And then I'll do a lip. For lips, I'm taking this one from Beauty Bakery. This is the Lip Whip. I honestly can't even remember when I used this. It must have been a first impressions or something. And I just haven't used it since. That is beautiful. Oh my God, that's like my lip color, but nicer. I'm not doing a defined lip. I'm literally just putting it in the middle and kind of like blending it out. I think when it comes to lip products, lip products is probably the thing I slide on the most just because I do have my favorites. And so they're the ones that I'll always use whereas like a bronzer or a highlighter, I'll kind of like switch up and be like, oh, let's try this one. Lips, I just know what I like. But yeah, that's... Cute. And then from NYX, I have this Filler Instinct Plumping Lip Polish. I think these are relatively new, so I must have used this recently. I know I haven't used it more than once though. It's just going in the center. 
These are super, super glittery, which is kind of ideal for Instagram photos because it picks up. Cute, just like a simple color lip, nothing too defined, nothing too crazy. The Beauty Bakery one, I feel like I probably would use again just because the color's so nice. Like I said, it's like my lip color, but a little bit better. The formula is not my favorite, so I don't know if it's one that I would like go out of my way to buy. There's better formulas out there. The Filler Instinct from NYX, I probably would purchase again because it's so glittery and beautiful. And also, it makes your lips fat. Lastly to say, I have the Makeup Fixer Spray from Ofra. I remember not really liking this. Again, I can't remember when I tried it. It was fucking ages ago. But I remember the spray on it is like really intense. I prefer like a, a light mist. Also, it smells like a fucking man. Like it smells like deodorant, which is to me not ideal. It's, it's like a smack in the face. Yeah, I think the Ofra setting spray for me is still a little bit of a miss. It's just so intense and I just smell like a dude, which I mean, isn't a massive problem because I am a dude, but it's just not what I want like a full face of makeup smelling of, to be honest. So yeah, this one's a little bit of a, like would I use it again? No, would I buy it? No. Okay guys, so that brings us to the end of today's video. This is the final look. As always, I would love to hear your thoughts on any of these products. If you have tried them, what you think. And if there are any products that I've used in the past that I've said I will try again that you're waiting to hear from me on, definitely let me know because I know there's a few because I do it all the f***ing time. So yeah, let me know because I can film this type of video again if you guys enjoyed it. Speaking of, if you did, please give it a thumbs up for me. Subscribe to my channel, subscribe to my channel. Don't know what the fuck that was. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. As always, I love you and I'll hopefully see you in my next video. Bye guys.